for those of you that, that don't know me, uh, uh, you're probably lucky as, as uh, Dave would, would say over here. Uh, I'm Dave Shuttler. I'm the, uh, the uh, urban landscape entomologist here at The Ohio State University. Uh, I go by the professional nickname of the Bug Doc. I've got one of those uh, deadly three-way splits. I've got a 60% outreach extension appointment. I've got a 20% turf grass research uh, in entomology, so I try to develop in that research area uh, different types of programs and materials to control the insects that attack turf grass. And then I, I mean, I try to teach students with the other 20% that I have, and I teach uh, some of the general entomology courses, and, and I, I suspect there's some faces here that may have even suffered under me in, in the courses that I teach in ornamental and turf uh, entomology. What we'd like to talk about today is the annual bluegrass weevil, and, and this is on uh, page 17. Didn't have my glasses on uh, of your booklet, and uh, I'd like to draw your attention to that because this is kind of a new insect in, in the state of Ohio. Uh, traditionally, the annual bluegrass weevil has been a pest that, that uh, people have seen and have dealt with uh, over in the New England states, but over the last decade, it's moved south in the New England states. It's now in New Jersey, uh, in, in Virginia, places like that. Uh, about uh, 10 to 12 years ago, I got a call from the superintendents over in the Pittsburgh area, and they said, Dr. Shetler, can you come over and talk about annual bluegrass weevil? I said, what? Well, we found out that it's a significant pest in the Pittsburgh area, the greater Pittsburgh uh, area, all the way down into Morgantown. Uh, and then a couple of years ago, we had a golf course up in the Cleveland area that called us uh, about a week before they were going to have a tournament. Uh, and, and the tech rep that had visited the course, the superintendent had put down insecticide for his black turf grass atenius and white grubs. And here in the last week of June, he was having what he thought was atenius breakthrough. Well, when the tech rep got there, he said, I don't think this is a tenuous. I had Dr. Shuttler's course, and there's something wrong with these larvae. And I want you to take a look at the picture. The first picture that I want you to take a look at is the one there on the right, where you see a picture of the annual bluegrass weevil pupa, but down below is the larva. Now, why is that not an annual bluegrass weevil larva? Do you remember about weevils? Remember, weevils have grub-like larvae, but these larvae have no legs. And so if you look really closely at this little white grub that just, for all intents and purposes, looks like a little black turf grass atenius grub, doesn't have any legs. It doesn't crawl around. Just kind of like a Michelin man wiggling around, and, and you go, oh my god. The problem is, for this particular course, is that it was causing the damage in late June, exactly the time he was expecting Atenius to be there. Over the last couple of years, we now have located about a dozen golf courses that have fessed up to admit that they've got the annual bluegrass weevil here in Ohio. And so uh, we're trying to alert everybody for that. Uh, I, my personal belief is, is that we have the climate in Ohio that's similar to what we see even in Virginia where they're seeing this pest, uh, and it, it's liable to be spreading across the state and moving in. Uh, again, uh, a lot of people will say, well, I remember in that black turf grass atenius, nobody had black turf grass atenius until you entomologists showed up and, and started pointing it out. No, we're not spreading this ourselves. We, we think this is coming on its own and, and so forth. Now, one of the things that I'd like you to, to also see is the size of this rascal. And I'm going to pass these around so that you can see this is a little tiny weevil. Little rascal. <laughs> uh, well, it won't, it won't hurt. It's just alcohol. Don't give it to Gribbler then. Yeah. Yeah, I won't tell him. It's, it's denatured alcohol. <laughs> But I want you to see the, the, the little uh, rascal. Now, how many of you think that you might have annual bluegrass weevil? Now, I know some of you might be distributors. Have, have you had customers that have dealt with annual bluegrass weevil? Nobody wants to fess up or admit it. Right? The last group, we actually had three or four superintendents that were from the northern part of the state, and, and they fessed up the, that they have it. 
what we want you to do is, uh, if you've got this, we'd really like you to contact us. Uh, uh, you can email me or contact me uh, uh, directly, uh, phones, things like that. Uh, and what we're looking for are sites in Ohio. We would like to work with you in control programs. Uh, and and uh, again, we uh, for those of you that if you don't want to admit it now that you think you might be dealing with this, uh, we do have a sheet that we would like you to, to fill out, sort of a survey sheet that uh, tells us uh, what you've been doing and what you, uh, the time that you've been doing things to control this weevil. I have a question, Dr. Kelly. Yes. Are, are, are you guys doing <laughs> season-long control with the uh, merits and meridians? And uh, the, the question is, are we seeing season-long control with the merits and meridians? The answer is no. Uh, I'll, I'll be brutally honest with you, as far as I'm concerned, the two top performing products are combination products. The, the Electus or the Electus-like products and the Aloft uh, type products. Uh, it seems to take a, a double whammy. You, you need a neonicotinoid that seems to help take out the larvae, but also having the bifenthrin in there takes out the adults. Now, what I wanted to, to also do here is, is take a look at the life cycle. Uh, the annual bluegrass weevil is like the uh, 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 Kentucky bluegrass, or the, the bluegrass billbug, they overwinter as adults. We believe most of these adults overwinter in the rough areas and in the tree or, or forested areas on the sides of the fairways. So in the springtime, those weevils wake up and they start moving, but they prefer to lay their eggs in shortcut poa annua, annual bluegrass. That's why they're given the name annual bluegrass weevil. What they're going to do is they, they, on their way to that shortcut turf, they are going to be feeding and maturing their ovaries to get there. So we believe that one of the problems in the past is that if you take a look at the, the normal recommendations that were made in the New England states, they often stated, wait until the weevils get to the fairway and then treat them at that time. We think that's too late. We think you have a real opportunity to intercept those weevils before they get to that area. And, and so what we're talking about here is an adult preventive. What we're doing is, is either taking a contact pesticide like the pyrethroids or the, the Dursban or materials like that, or the combination products, things like Aloft and Electus. Uh, and when you apply those, when those weevil adults take their first bite out of that plant material, we take them out of the system before they get to the fairways. And, and so that's our strategy, and, and that's what we're talking about uh, for this particular weevil. Uh, you can see in here that there are, there are other types of programs in here. Uh, sometimes you, you might have to in, in heavy infestations. We do that interception. We treat the roughs. We treat the surrounds of the greens and the tees, uh, maybe a little bit in, into the border of the, the fairways and, and the, the tee collars and, and things like that. Uh, but then uh, don't just walk away from it and assume that you've got everything under control. You probably need to be doing some sampling. If you find some larvae later on that have escaped for some reason, there, as you can see here, there are some products that, that can work on those larvae and take those larvae out. Uh, one of the new products that contains dinotefuron, xylam, has, has been working quite well uh, in, in some of those curative treatments. Uh, and and uh, uh, finally, uh, you will find out that, that uh, Harry has got some of these documented programs. Uh, he's been working with about a dozen uh, golf courses uh, on the eastern seaboard and we're also uh, in, in Pennsylvania. But he's working with courses now here in Ohio. Uh, and he's posted the results of a lot of his studies uh, on a website. You can obtain that at, at uh, this uh, bugs.osu.edu bugdoc.hdn. And, and so feel free to go to that website. Most importantly, if you think you've seen this weevil, either the damage or the weevil, we want to hear from you. We'd like to work with you to try to, to figure out how to best manage this particular uh, pest here in the state of Ohio. Okay? Yeah. Multiple generations of this in a growing yes, uh, up in the Cleveland area, they are definitely in a second generation up there. Uh, in some of the New England states, they're seeing three generations. Uh, right now, we're, we're, I think we're easily documenting two generations uh, in, in our uh, zone.